Okay, so the next step here is to rebuild the function reduce, right, from scratch. So we're going to remove the, the, the previous one that we did that was filter. And if you missed that, yeah, please do watch it and uh, learn how we made that implementation right there. So here, that's also an interesting one, reduce. What is reduce? Reduce is what I call the Swiss knife. That's the thing that can do literally everything you could imagine in terms of manipulating arrays. You don't want to use that often. And that's what I'm going to show you here with the code. We're going to try to rebuild that from scratch and try to understand how um, uh, reduce works underneath. And it's actually not more complicated than the previous one that we've implemented. Okay, so let's get going here. What is re reduce doing? If we take the, the, the promise here, which was uh, find the user that has an X in their name, what we expect here is reduce will return us that result. Okay, so here we should have a result like this. And then when we look at result, we should basically have uh, uh, the, the result showing. Now it's crashing because we haven't done the implementation. So let's go ahead and create a function called reduce. That function is going to take uh, uh, the collection. Okay, so a known, always start with that, and then a callback. And that callback is a little bit different than the previous one that we had before. So I'm just going to say here, hey, be a function. And now from here, what we're going to do is once again, loop through the collection. That's basically what you do uh, with the collection. So we're going to loop here and we're going to loop through that collection right there. Okay. So, um, and then, uh, with, with, the, with that collection, what we're going to do. What are we doing next? Um, oh yeah, actually we're missing one more argument here, which is the initial value. And also this one, we don't really know what it is. Uh, so let me move that over here. So we, we see it uh, uh, clearly right there. Now we have kind of everything in place to make it work. So what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for here is to, uh, uh, from here, when we have that element, instead of calling, just assigning it this way, what we want to do is to pass the callback, okay? And then uh, we're just gonna pass that, uh, the, uh, the, the, the collection inside right there. And then what we would like to do, and that's basically where it becomes kind of uh, uh, tricky is, what do you do with that callback? What do you do with that callback? What do you do with the result of that callback? So. The result of that callback, it's something called an accumulator. Accumulator, right? It's basically, you can think of it as a storage, a place where you're going to store the result of the, the previous callback, and then you iterate and each time you update that value. Because we're going to update that, we first going to create it right here. So I'm just gonna say accumulator. And the accumulator takes an initial value, and that's basically the initial value that is being passed right here. Got it? And then uh, basically here, as as uh, uh, we, we, we're doing that, we can then return uh, the accumulator uh, like this. Now, what do we have right there? We see that indeed, um, in terms of implementation, we just have something that takes an initial value. And then as we're calling this, we're passing the next value uh, to, to the accumulator and the accumulator is being returned. And then it goes like that in, in, in a loop, right? Is this working? So let's, let's, let's see if this is working right there. So here we said the initial value is an object. And then right here, uh, we want to basically uh, apply the, the the callback and make sure that it, it, it works. In our case, we want to check that if username that includes the value x, okay, what we want to do with it is basically to say, um, okay, we have an accumulator there. What we want to do is to say accumulator is equal that user. That's basically what we expect right there. So we have something that is not working. What is it? 
what is it? We have a callback. We're passing a collection. Cannot read property of undefined reading name. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, makes completely sense. It makes completely sense. So here we need to pass the accumulator and then we should have something that works quite, quite, quite well there. And then uh, right here, we just need to return uh, the accumulator. That basically uh, what we have uh, right now. So look at it closely here. So what we're saying there is we have a function that receive a uh, uh, a collection, it receives a callback and then an initial value. We don't know what is it, we don't know what thing is. That basically that's that's it. And then from here, we going to have um uh we, we assign the initial value to the accumulator, right? Uh, and then we loop through the entire thing, and then for each for, for each time we call the callback, we pass the accumulator as the first argument. And then the next item uh, of the collection. And then we return the accumulator so that we go to the next step, so on and so on and so forth. So that's, as you can see here, it is working. It is working here and we use we use that over there. It's working. We get exactly the, the thing we're looking for. Now, um, once again, if you look at what we wrote here, we were having an issue, right? User.name. What is name? Okay. So how do we fix that? Simple. We're going to type things better. And then it all, it all starts with that function keyword right there. So our, and the way I'm going to call it, it'll just call it reduce callback. That's basically it. So now let's implement that. I'm just going to mark that as an interface and then say reduce callback. It's a function that returns something. What is that thing? So um, the thing there is we know what it returns. We know the type of the thing it's returned. It's actually this type of that initial value. Like we did in a previous video, because we cannot enforce it, uh, basically by saying you're going to be a string that we don't know, we could use a uh, uh, um, we could use a generics for that. So let's let's do that over here. We're just gonna use a generic, and I'm gonna say this is going to be t, and I'm gonna use the, the t over there. So let me uh, uh, copy that part, and we're gonna make sure that we 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 add it over there, and then we add it right here, right? So that's basically already the return value. And because we know that that's the return value, we can put it right there at initial value. Be, uh, uh, that's going to be basically the shape of what we want to, to return. And then it takes uh, a few arguments here. The first one is an accumulator. Um, uh, the accumulator will basically be of type T. That's basically it. And then it takes the next item in um, uh, the, the the next item in the in, in, in the loop. So what is the the next item in the loop? I'm just gonna call it item, and I'm going to assume that this one is I don't know what type is it. I really don't know what type is it. So I'm just gonna add uh, another value here and just give it a different value over there. Just saying, hey, uh, this is another one. And because it is another one, I can now say that, hey, that collection is of type V right there. So by doing that, I'm saying, hey, the collection is of type V and then each item of the collection will just be uh, uh, V, right? And, and then from there, we loop, we do the, the work. And then once we're done, we're basically assigning uh, that value uh, this way. Now, is this working? Let's check. Let's check. The check we're going to do is basically we go here and we're going to remove all of this and then say user dot. And now you see it's working name. And because it's known as a string, I can then say includes and I don't have to, to play the guess game that we do with JavaScript. This is beautiful. This is uh, uh, the, the way you learn. This is the way you improve. And I'm doing it here with TypeScript. You could do that with any programming language. By the way, if you want to see me do that with Rust, um, things like um, Go, other programming languages, 
check the link. There is a hidden link right there in the description where basically I do this kind of stuff. I like doing that. That's the way I learn all these tools and become just better as a software engineer. But with the focus here is on, on the JavaScript TypeScript ecosystem. And it's also part of a course that I'm working on, which is JavaScript versus TypeScript, uh, a safer way to write a JavaScript application. And this here, my friend, it's beautiful. If you have a different way of thinking about it, let me know. I'm not sure anymore about the, uh, the number of argument, the reduce callback text, but this is going to be on another video. Thank you. See you next time. The subscribe button is your best friend. Cheers.